Good evening, everybody. It's wonderful to see you all uh, for the last Dharma talk of this winter culture. Hello. <laughs> um, sometimes when experiencing uh, some kind of trauma, it manifests physically. I can give myself as an example. Um, I lost my voice in a result of uh, some kind of trauma. I wanted to ask um, why does it happen and can it be changed or reversed? Yeah. It's a matter of willpower and what actually blocks your willpower. So if you are against something that blocks your willpower, you break your body and you break your mind. So at that time, you really have to withdraw your will, come back to zero. We call that not moving mind or not wanting anything. It's like a car that gets into a blind alley. No matter how hard you try, you cannot go through the house or the wall, which is right in front of you. You can break the car, but you don't get through. So then you have to put it into reverse, go back to the next intersection, take a turn, go around the block, etc. In real life, what you really need to do is get back from that way, from that direction, which blocks you. Come back to zero, don't go anywhere, don't want anything, and most of it, don't judge the whole process. The universe is not good or bad. You may have not noticed something. And that's our own ignorance. Many times we don't see cause and effect. Many times we don't see our direction. And that's when we go into blind alleys and that's when we can break ourselves. And if you don't do that, then you save your energy, save your willpower, come back to zero, find another direction, find another method, and then you can exert your will. Now, there is a very critical balance here. When do you give up and when do you just change tactics? Deep inside, this is really, really important to clarify. Because you cannot and should not fool yourself that, oh, I'm just taking another street. But deep inside you gave up. You stopped believing in yourself. You stopped believing in what you wanted originally. If you don't give up, if you don't stop believing in yourself, then you can exert your will in another way. Very important point. But uh, if you don't come back from the blind alley because you say, I have to be persistent, then over time you lose energy, you lose faith, and there will be no results, only broken glass on the floor. Okay? So very clear. Direction never changes. The path there, that can change. The method can change. The result does not change. So that's how you can stay flexible and strong at the same time. Okay? So uh, we use a lot the concept of karma and I was trying to wrap my mind around my mind around what is karma exactly and from what I understand and I ask you this is this the story that is, was our life the way we saw it or other people told us to? And is it the attachment to a certain meaning? Uh, could you go deeper and explain more about what is it exactly? You are interested in karma. Or what it is. <laughs> Why? Curiosity. What is it that's curious in you? Now, when you don't think, there is no karma. When your mind moves, it makes names and forms. And when you speak, when you think, when you feel, when you act, there is cause and effect. So, cause and effect is called karma. The action and the result, the speech and the result, the thought and the result, feeling and the result. These results in turn become sources. And then there are secondary, tertiary, etc. Action, reaction, action, reaction, all the time. 
So what is the root cause of all this karma? Where does all this come from? And that's when we say, look inside, find the mind which is before thinking, before feelings, before speech, before action. That's the source. So when you make karma, then there is cause and effect. The accumulation of cause and effect, the formation of habits out of cause and effect, the integration of habits into personality traits, then the assembly of personality, and then the persons form groups, the groups, societies, and societies, civilizations. And that's just the human realm. So, from the first bit of zero and one, to the most complex matrix, it all follows cause and effect on all these channels. And we, human beings, can perceive that. This kind of ability to perceive is called Buddha nature, or true nature. So, eight hours a day, we sit and we use this Buddha nature and separate it from the karma that is in there that is contaminating it by attachment, by dualistic fixed relationship. So you let go of this karma, you perceive this karma, then there is no karma, then you can use karma. Many times I uh, use a metaphor of the painter, because the painter is a wonderful person, very creative, but suddenly he or she notices that there is paint on her face. She realizes her face was in the canvas all the time. She realized she never stepped back from the canvas and whatever she was doing, she had it on her face. And she believed that this was her face. Then she takes a step back, then she sees the brush, puts down the brush, washes her face, sees original color, and then she can paint very well. She paints the picture, not herself. Okay? So, this is important because if you identify with any kind of karma, your self-image is tragically defined. You think you are this and only this, and then you cannot change, cannot adapt, cannot develop, cannot evolve, and most of all cannot gain insight. Okay? So, our true nature and our self-image is mostly different. The extent of the difference is the extent of our suffering. The more distant your true nature and self-image are, the bigger the suffering is. And you can see that in many people who are super strong, and super energetic about something that causes suffering to other people and to themselves too. So the closer this self-image is to the actual true nature of human beings, the less this suffering is. And finally, when this self-image disappears, then there's only your true nature, no I. Only sky is blue, trees are green, floor is brown. Someone's hungry, give them food. Someone's thirsty, give them drink. Very simple, but can we do this? All this complexity and all this distortion comes from the difference between the actual experience of what we truly are and the self-image that we keep polishing and feeding all the time. So practice means you dissolve this self-image. You terminate this duality between what you think you are and what you truly are. Then you can control karma. If you cannot do that, then karma controls you. Your habits control you, which is totally insane. How is it that the manager of the chocolate factory dies in the chocolate that he or she produced. That's how we are, humans. Um, how can you find your direction? Where do you want to go? It's a good question. That helps you find your direction. You don't want to go anywhere, direction is not necessary. You want to go someplace, then find the best direction for that. You want to achieve something, find the best method for that. Get enlightenment, save all beings. Fantastic direction. 
But if some practitioners don't have that, then they can have this samadhi sickness. They learn everything, they practice very well, but no direction. Then they can get lost in this samadhi. You can see that many times these are the kind of captivated in the hermitage type of people. They feel perfect, but they don't help all beings. That means no direction for the practice. Okay? Why, uh, what, um, if you feel like your direction or path, it's in the fog, like blurry, you don't really <laughs> Use your it. fog light. <laughs> That's your question. What is my job? Why was I born? What's the purpose of my being here? You ask that question, something bounces back. And soon of this chaos, this foggy state, your simple and clear direction will appear. If you don't ask the question, no answer. You ask the question, sometimes you get more answers than you need. Then let it be sorted out, okay? That takes time. That's what we are practicing here. So the original form of the Huadu meditation is directing your energy inside and ask, what is this? What is it that sitting, standing, lying down, talking, silent, in the body, outside of the body, awake and dreaming? What's that? However, you can turn this around and you can have an object-oriented meditation. Then you ask the question differently. You have a problem, you direct your attention to that and you say, what is this? Where does this come from? Or when you have an issue like this, what is my true way? What is my correct direction? And you don't spend just a few days with it, maybe a few weeks or a few months. Some people say three month retreat is too long. What happens to my job, to my family, to my life? Really? You live 70, 80 years on this earth, three months is not such a long time to find your precise direction, what you really want to do, what actually your life is about, to look inside a little bit and discover that. It's nothing. Okay, it's just like going shopping and then having very good food on the table after cooking it. So ask the question, the fog lifts, your direction appears. Okay? What if you have this uh, kind of uh, memory that uh, controls you and you are not in the state that you cannot judge it? So therefore you cannot let it go. But, and you keep walking around it like in circles, like you said. And um, so what then? Because you are not able More to stop judging More practice it. necessary. Come back to not moving mind. Come back to the mind of being 100% present at this moment then the judgment disappears. Judgment is heavy dualistic energy. Absolute values of good and bad. That's how judgments are born. But the moment you make it relative, the moment you see how they depend on circumstances, how cause and effect actually operate, not what you think, not just what you want to limit yourself to, but open it up and see it in its larger and larger context. Then the pressure, the tension all disappear. You see it, but there'll be no more heavy reaction, plus or minus, good or bad, about it. And then, when this duality is gone, then the judgmental mind is also gone. You have to watch this over and over again. Why do you think your mind brings that up? Because you still have dualistic energy in it. And before that disappears, you keep watching it. Because you want it or you don't want it, so it comes up. So when you remove the judgment because you do enough mantra, you do enough bows, you come back to your question and you don't move from that moment, then this dualistic reaction disappears because it doesn't exist by itself. You make it. When you stop making it, it's gone without a trace. Then you come back to not moving clear mind, then the exact Thing appears as it is, then it disappears and it doesn't have to come back. Because your attitude, your relationship with it became correct. So, when you are complete, 
you are released. Before that, you have to keep churning your karma, cleaning it, working on it and whatnot. But the moment your relationship becomes clear, the moment you attain this not moving clear like space consciousness, gone. All right? Your choice. <laughs> it's hard for me to believe it. <laughs> Did I ask you to believe it? Your choice. Believe it or not, completely your decision. Okay? So thank you very much for coming for this Dharma talk. And uh, I encourage everybody to carry the spirit of this Sangha forward, not just the next day, but also when you leave this Gyolche, so that we could practice together again, make another effort to attain awakening again, and save all beings from suffering. Thank you very much. <laughs>